Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence. This is my channel about electric cars from a different perspective. And did you know that you can update your Kia, Genesis, or Hyundai vehicle for free? Well, if you want to find out how, stick around. I'll let you know in 10 seconds. A little over a year ago, I published a video about how to update the 2019 Kia Niro EV by purchasing the SD card upgrade straight from the Kia Mappensoft website. Now, shortly after publishing that video, there was the release of the new website, update.kia.com, where you could do it for free. Now, I'll show you how to do that shortly, but first things first, let me show you how to check out the software version in your car, as well as where the SD card resides in this particular car, as well as where the USB port is for when you need to do the upgrade on a 2020 and newer. If you want to know what version of software you have in your Genesis, Hyundai, or Kia vehicle, the menus that I'm going to show you here should be a general guideline, but yours may differ slightly. So all you have to do from the main screen that you see right here is tap on all menus, then swipe over to setup, swipe over to general, and then you see the software information, the last updated date, the model of my head unit, software version, firmware version, as well as the map version, and then below that, the device ID. Now, previous versions of this software did not have this exact software update page. There was no update button, and some of this was slightly different. If you're interested in seeing some of the other menus and what it looked like prior to the update, I'll put a link on the screen up here for my other video from 2020, if I'm not mistaken, where I show how to update using the purchased SD card prior to this free website update. Now that you know your software version, where exactly does this memory upgrade go? Where is the original card that's in the car? Well, if you've got a 2019 and older, the memory card is hidden behind a little plate. Now, in my car, it's an SD card, and you can see right here, it's behind this little SD cover that you just pull forward like this, and then press to eject the SD card. Now, if you've got a 2020 or newer vehicle, you're not going to have a memory card. It's going to be done through the central Android Auto and Apple CarPlay USB port that you can see right here. Now you know where the memory card or the USB port are for the upgrade. How do you get the software? Let me show you that now. You can update your Kia, Hyundai, or Genesis vehicle by downloading the appropriate software. There are three websites that were branded for each specific brand of product, but it is the same software for all three. So you can go to update.hyundai.com, update.genesis.com, or in my case, update.kia.com. The software that you get is identical for all three. Just scroll down, click on start here. The next page that pops up will give you the download page. I'm going to select Windows because that's what I've got as a computer. And I'm going to select open. Once I download it, it's 100 megs, so we'll just let it finish downloading. And once done, you get a Windows pop-up saying, do you want to execute the software? Just say yes. I'll minimize the browser now. And you select your country. Since I'm in Canada, that's what I'm going to be selecting. Click Next. And this is what I mentioned. It's the same software for all three, no matter what website you use. I'm going to select Kia, but you could select Genesis or Hyundai. I've got Kias, so that's what I'm picking. And then you click Next. Select your language. Click Next. Accept the terms and conditions. There are tons of things to read here, but I'm just going to click Next. And I don't need a desktop shortcut, but I'll still have it created so you can see what it looks like by default. And it doesn't take much space on the hard drive. It's only about 200 meg. The software will finish installing, and then I'll be able to execute it straight from the next pop-up. Now this logging in portion is essentially the software communicating with the servers in Canada and choosing the location for your temporary files. Now I've already got something set up, so I'm not going to use the default one. I'm actually going to use something that I already have set up for my channel and select that folder and then select OK. Now, this is explaining exactly what I'm going to show you. You can choose your model or your software version, or you can plug in the USB or SD card that you're currently using and let it automatically detect. I'm just going to click on Don't Show Me This Again, because I know exactly what I need. Now, once you plug in a blank 
SD card into your computer using either a little adapter or using a USB key for cars that are 2020 and newer, you need to choose your version of vehicle. So I can select the Nero Electric. I have a 2019. So now we'll just click on OK. And this is giving me some brief details and showing me what it's going to look like once it's done. As you can see on the SD card, you need 30 gigs of space. So you want to have a 32 gig SD card or you want to have a 32 gig USB stick for cars that are 2020 and newer. The easiest way to get the latest update for your car is to take the SD card out of the car, the one that's already got the current software that you're using in it, or to have a USB key that's already been prepared for your particular vehicle. Open the software like I have here with the default vehicle that's the first one in the list. And then all you have to do is plug in the SD card or the USB key into the computer. Once that's done, then the software will automatically detect the version that's on it and then propose the updated software for your vehicle automatically. No guessing, no digging, no, no having to know what version or what year your car is. And then all you have to do is click Next. And it's telling me that it will format my SD card completely. And these are the specifications that are required. I know it's the proper SD card because it's something I've already used. So I'm just going to click OK. And it's going to erase everything on the SD card, which is cool with me because it is blank. And then you sit and wait. Now, this process can take a good 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on your internet speed and your computer speed. Um, but I will just let this run and speed through it with the magic of YouTube. Just a quick note, once the download starts it's not just the download it's actually installing the software onto the sd card at the same time it's one of the reasons that it takes a little bit longer than i mentioned it's about 20 to 30 minutes depending on all of the conditions i mentioned previously as well as the speed of the sd card that you've got but once you're done all you have to do is close the program after deleting temporary files if you don't want to leave all that stuff on your hard drive which is what i do and then click yes and you're done then you just have to pull out the SD card, head over to the car, and do the update. Let's go see how that's done. To do the update, make sure that your car is turned off, that you've got your updated SD card in hand, and then insert the SD card into the slot that you took it out of. Let me do that right now. And I'll just close the cover. Once that's done, just turn on the car, and you'll be prompted to do the next step. Now one thing to note, you start the car as if you're going to drive it so that it's fully powered on. And this update process can take anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes. So be prepared to wait for this to happen and not to use your car during the update process. Now that the car's rebooted, I'll tap on confirm. The message that says it's unsuccessful uh, initializing the map is fine it's because it's got to do the update as you can see here it prompts you to tap on OK do that and then you'll be able to get the update started now you sit and wait for this to complete it like I said it takes about 15 to 30 minutes depending on the size of the update or the version that you're going from to this new version. Now, as you just saw on the screen, it's important that you don't turn off the car during this process. It could cause problems with the navigation system and radio. So be sure to leave the car powered on and let it do its thing completely. Now that the files are already all copied over, it's just a question of letting the system update any hardware or software that's integrated into the system with whatever it's copied over.
And that's it. Once the system is finished doing its update, it turns back on with the new time and date. And it has the radio that turns on by itself. This is something that I experienced when I updated my car the last time about a year ago. So you just press the power button to turn that off. Now you'll notice that the interface is completely changed with regards to the look, the colors and design have changed to this new, let's just call it polarizing purple color scheme. A lot of people were unhappy when they updated their cars and got this because, well, they preferred the more traditional white and gray color scheme. Now I did notice that the time and date at the top of the screen are a different font and everything is a little bit bigger if I'm not mistaken making it easier to read. Other than that the menus that you have on the main screen are all identical. The biggest difference comes from the actual radio interface which I'll show you the original which was very traditional looking very standard looking. This new one is rather let's just say different. This is the radio interface that you actually get in all of the new Kias that come out. The 2020 and newer cars all have the 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen that was not available in 2019 when I got this car. And they got this uh, as the radio interface. One thing I did find interesting is this whole section of the top is kind of a big waste of space where they could have put other things. But to change the... Um, FM to Sirius XM, etc. Just press this uh, button here and it will scroll through the different media modes that you have active. If you want to see the list of channels, you just press the list button and then it will list all of the channels that are there. The arrow up here to go back, I'll turn the radio off and we'll go to the all menus screen and do like before. As you can see, the menus are all purple. We'll go to setup and we'll go over to general and the software information now shows that I updated on this day. It gives me the platform as well, which wasn't stated before. And you can see the software version that I've got, the firmware version that I've got and a little bit more detailed information. Now, one thing I noticed that's new, if I go back to the main menu is valet mode. Now valet mode is something I did not have prior to this update and I wasn't aware that I would be getting it. When I tap that, it's supposed to actually ask me for my four digit pin that's in my Kia Connect app. And when I go to the website, the myuvo.ca, and I log into my account, it shows me that the service is there as well, but there's nowhere for me to do anything in terms of pin or activation. So I need to call customer service and find out what's going on. It's been a couple of days since I recorded what you just watched and I have new information. I called Key Canada's customer support. I spoke to a very kind woman who gave me information that the problem that I'm having had to be resolved by Kia Canada's technical support and that she had to open a ticket because there's no end user technical support. Now, I was told that I would get a call back within 24 to 48 hours, but this morning when I got into my car, this is what happened. As you can see here, whatever Kia technical support did to my UVO services, they got disconnected in my car. So now I've got to log into the services in my car again. In order to activate the UVO services or the Kia Connect services, all you have to do is tap on all menus, swipe over to the right, tap on UVO, tap on UVO settings, and then tap on feature enrollment. There will be some terms and conditions that'll pop up. Tap on I agree, tap on next, now you need to select either new registration or existing account. I'm going to tap existing account because that's what I've got. And now I'll enter my email address and my password. Once you've entered your email address and password, just tap on submit. So as you could see, when I got into my car, UVO was disconnected. So it seems that technical support did something on the back end and that should have resolved the problem. But when I tried to log in initially, it wouldn't work. Now, I ended up calling Kia Canada's customer support again, and I spoke to a different person, and she looked at the ticket and told me that she would have to resolve the issue with technical support. And then just before hanging up, she said, you know what, let me try one thing. And she forced a re-enrollment on her side, and it's something that was super easy for her to do. 
and lo and behold, problem solved. So here's what happened. This is what popped up on the screen of my car even though I was at the submit my username and password for my account screen. Then when I tapped on OK, it went right back to the submit username and password. The person at customer support told me that I should just press the home button that you see here to be able to return to the home screen. With that done, she asked me to power the car off and open the door to make sure everything was completely shut down. Then power the car back on and get into the menu to see if valet mode would work. So now that that's done, when the car is started, tap on all menus, swipe over, tap on valet mode. Now it asks you for your PIN, enter that. Once you've entered the PIN, it's in valet mode. To deactivate, re-enter the PIN. Another big change that I found in the interface that's been upgraded is the climate control. Now, the previous climate control was a very plain and simple interface where it only had like a stick figure shown sideways in the shape of a seat with some arrows pointing at it and the temperature in a very large white number. Now on the new version, it is far more modernized and shows much more information. Now the nice thing here is that the temperature now shows right in the middle in the section here that you can see from blue to red and it's got the outside temperature up here and what's also very cool is the vents that are showing are really graphical and very very nice so very cool how they've implemented this and makes it way more interesting just before you click away from this video, I thought I would let you know that there are bloopers at the end of all my videos in case you skip out before the end. If you want to see me make a fool of myself, well, stick around to the end and check that out. I also thought I should let you know that I've got an Evolution webpage with a new web store where you can purchase t-shirts with the Evolution logo on it. I've got black, gray, and blue to choose from in various sizes, so if that's something that's interesting to you, I'll have a link in the description below, as well as links to my social media. Now, if you liked this video, I would really appreciate you clicking on that subscribe button to help me grow this channel and gain the attention of major manufacturers so I can make more videos about their cars like I've done in the past. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch my video. Did you know that if you've got a Kia or Hyundai or Genesis product, product? Yeah, it's a product, but meh. Welcome to Evolution, my chat. Welcome, I did it again, welcome. And did you know that you can freely, freely update? <laughs> As opposed to a restricted update. And did you know that you can update your Kia, Genesis or Hyundai car completely for free? Completely for free. And I didn't say my name, wow. Three month break, can't make videos. And I'll show you that right now. Just pull this little flap forward and then flap, pull this little flap forward. Now you know where the memory card is or where the USB port is for the upgrade. How do you actually, how do you actually get the software? So with that being said, I said thank you very much and I waited for a call. E -er 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 -er. I've got black, gray and blue for your different, ah, son of a schlitz. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below as well. Aha, my mouth's frozen. In case you weren't aware, I've got a new store, a do store, a do store. In case you weren't aware, I've got a new shop page on, shop page. Put a picture of that up here on the screen. I've got black, gray, and gray. I got black, gray, and blue. It's cold. And didn't ask you to subscribe because I forgot.